responsibility is more empowering than excuses. In this video, I wanna talk about how to move from, if you're a person that makes a lot of excuses or you live in excuses or you don't like excuses, I wanna to talk to you guys about how you can live a more empowered life by moving from excuses to responsibility. Um, when you make ex excuses for something, you take the locus of control outside of yourself and you place it into something external. So we're trying to flip that and make it internal. Um, so let's just jump right in. Number one, you're responsible for yourself. We've all heard the, um, you know, if you're on an airplane, right, put on the mask for yourself first before somebody else. And so I like to say putting yourself first is the most selfless thing that you can do because if you don't take care of yourself, you just become a problem or a burden for others. Um, so putting yourself means following within the context of, of business and entrepreneurship. To me, it means following your intuition over being controlled by the fear of what other people will think. So in a previous video, I talked about reading books for status. That would be an example of this, right? So like you're, you're not even reading the books maybe that you want to, or you're just reading certain things so that you feel up to date, you know the keywords, but you're not actually implementing them or they're not actually changing your life in a meaningful way. Um, you're just reading them for status. You're doing something to be a certain way. And so um, being responsible means like, going with your gut, going with your intuition, going with the thing that you already know that you should do is right before doing things to impress other people. Um, another piece of this is like flipping, flipping the coin a little bit. Um, I believe that gifts are intended to be shared, right? So you have, you go back a thousand years, it's like you have a blacksmith and you have a baker and you have this and you have that. And even on a more granular level, you have someone that's good at speaking, someone that's good at writing, someone that's good at reading, someone that's artist. And what good are our gifts if they're all just held into ourself? And so once you meet your own needs by being responsible for yourself, you, I believe, you know, we're meant to plug in and share with other people. So once your needs are met, um, you should be helping other people with your skills, with your gifts, and I think often overlooked is with your perspective. Now, you don't want to force it on people. They have to be willing to hear you out and they have to be interested. But sharing your perspective with somebody in a player coach setting is super helpful if they're looking for it and they're open to it. Okay, number two is you are responsible for your joy. And this, um, this, this whole message is like precipitated by a lot of the posts that I've seen recently on LinkedIn where it's like, you know, it talks about a bad boss or a toxic work environment. And it's like, there's just so many like short tweets or things that I see on LinkedIn with regard to this. And it's like, they really make me think I've had no shortage of bad bosses, like just FYI. Like for me, I can think of one when I was like transitioning to work in New York City, which was already hard enough. And you know, if you've ever been through that, you, you negotiate your salary, whatever. And if you're moving into the city for the first time, you might think you're making a ton of money and then you get in and you're like, holy crap, I didn't realize how expensive everything was. I'm making nothing. I don't know how I'm gonna survive. So there was that. And then in addition to that, um, at the time, it was my first week starting. So like Monday, I found out that my mom, who was on the third time having breast cancer, needed somebody to drive her home on Friday, and I really wanted to be that person. Um, and so I asked my boss, I'm like, hey, is there any way that I could work remote for part of the day Friday so I can drive my mom home from this thing? And it like, it just blew up into this whole thing, and the long story short, the answer was no. And I was like, this, that, for me, that was a toxic environment. And so instead of blaming them, instead of being upset at that boss, instead of putting the responsibility on somebody else to bring me joy or help me find balance or happiness, it is your responsibility. Like I'm not downplaying or negating the fact that you might be in a toxic work situation, but at the end of the day, that's not your boss's problem, it's your problem. And so you've gotta do something about that other than complain. Um, you might have to go somewhere else. You might have to figure out a way to deal with it. You might have to figure out a way to approach them. Um, it might expand you and make you bite your tongue and learn a new skill. Like for me, I've been in situations with bosses that I'm like, I can't work for this person. This is crazy. And now we're like best of friends because I had to bite my tongue for long enough to understand how to see the world through their, through their perspective. So it's nobody's, nobody else but your job to, for you to find happiness, for you to find joy, for you to find balance. So um, the one quote was like, you deserve to work for a boss that, you know, uh, like 
doesn't like mess up your mindset or whatever. And that just like really threw me down this process of thinking like, I don't disagree. You do deserve that, but that's within your locus of control. That's nobody else's responsibility. So, or you might see a post like no job should cost you your mental health. It's like, yeah, agreed. So do something about it. Um, the next piece is there will never be a shortage of obstacles in your life with people, with health, with whatever. And so it's your response. It's your responsibility to find a way over those hurdles every time that you're faced with them. Nobody else is going to do that for you. And so getting good with this is going to help you in other arenas of your life. So you're responsible for your joy. The first one was you're responsible for yourself. This is you're responsible for your joy. The next one, the third one, is you're responsible for your perspective, right? What does that mean? That means the lens through which you view the world. Um, you know, the lenses that we view the world through, I call this the collection of lenses, a mindset. And so they can either make us or break us. Um, you're responsible for being aware of, you know, lenses that serve you and ones that don't, and when you should change. Um, and so a good example of this is, you know, for me, for a long time, I thought like um, to acquire wealth or to pursue wealth or want to do well financially, it's like, where's the line between greed and whatever? And so it took me a while to change the frame that I had on that. And now I'm in a place where I can welcome more abundance into my life because I'm not actually pushing it away. It's like really weird. I've seen it in a lot of people where they they want something, but they're simultaneously pushing it away because they have a frame or a lens that doesn't serve them. If I have more, then somebody has less. And so you've got to figure out a way to reconcile that and do the research and come to the conclusions and immerse yourself in information to get over that or get around it, or you got to change your lens. Um, so you're responsible for your perspective. You're responsible for your own growth. No amount of done-for-you services, courses, diets, programs, None of that stuff is going to get you out of your own way. And I think this is such a powerful piece because as I go through these classes, as I read these books, it's like, it's so evident to me, like no tea, no shade, no pink lemonade on the people that I'm in course with, but like I've gone to a lot of these courses and there's people that are three, four, five, six times in the course. And it's like, they're wonderful people, but it's like, if you didn't get it the first time, like if it didn't change you the first time, like what's going on? Like, it's just strange to me. Like it's thousands of dollars to be in some of these courses. Like maybe you should take it more seriously. So you're not on round six. Like, I know that you like being here. I know that the teacher's cool, but like, what are we doing here? Um, and so take your growth, take the, like reading a book, watching a podcast, take it seriously. Like, like, what are you doing with your time? Like, what do you hope to get out of that thing? How is it going to transform you? How is it going to change you? Lower your wall of resistance. We all have to do this. Lower your resistance. You think you know that you already know whatever, but like, don't be so sure because what you're, what behind the wall of what you're so sure of, what you already know, probably lies the answers to getting to the next level of yourself that you haven't gotten to yet. So lower your resistance, be responsible for your own growth, be mentally flexible. What you resist will persist. Uh, Myron says that a lot. I think it's super true. What you push down, what you resist, it keeps coming back. And so be open-minded. If someone says something that's like, you know, they tell me my name's not Perry, I probably would like just shut down and be like, what? But I'm getting to a place where I'm more receptive of things that are crazy to me because I realize so many of these business principles, success principles, they flip the world on its head. And the more that I learn, the more that I know that I don't know. And so the lower my resistance has gone. Now that doesn't mean I accept anything and everything, but there's some crazy theories and things that I've been open to that I never would have been because I'm, I'm not interested in being right. I'm interested in finding the truth. Okay, so be mental, mentally flexible. Um, be mindful of what you resist because it will persist. And you are responsible for being adaptive. So all kind of the same thing. So number one was you're responsible for yourself. Number two is you are responsible for your joy. Number three, you are responsible for your perspective. And the last one is you're, you are responsible for your excuses. What does that mean? I mean, I kind of covered all that already, but I love this quote from Jim Quick. Even though he's not exactly my favorite, um, he is in the brain space, figuring out how to play brain puzzles and things to get your brain in a high performance state. Really interesting guy. But a quote from him that I love, listen to this. If you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them. If you fight for your limitations, you will get to keep them. 
um, it's a pretty powerful, <laughs> I don't think there's anything more powerful than that. So what does this look like in implementation? So I think a lot of times when people say, oh, I can't do that because of blah, 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 or I can't, I'm not good enough. I don't have that experience. And I do this too. I'm like, I'm speaking to you. I'm speaking to me. Um, be really w like hyper intentional with the words that you use. And yes, like I'm, I'm going into a subconscious component of this too. Like when you are saying those things, number one, it's exposing what you believe inside. And so be aware of that because you're putting yourself in this boundary, right? Um, but a lot of times, like every, I don't think a day goes by where I hear someone say that they disqualify themselves from something that they haven't even been disqualified from a job opportunity, a sports role, a certification thing. Like I did a whole video on certifications and how they should not stop you from doing whatever. Like every certification was made up. You can go make your own, like a degree or whatever. Like someone had those skills and abilities before the degree existed. So whatever excuse you're making up, don't fight that hard for it because you'll get to keep it. Um, okay. And that's not to say that your excuses aren't valid. Like you're going to have excuses for things. Like I know a person in my course, they got sick a couple weeks in, it's a three month course and they ended up dropping it and coming back. Things are going to happen. Like that stuff always happens. But the question is, and it's not that they weren't sick. It's not an invalid thing, but the question is, what are you going to do now? And so for me, I'm like, well, getting sick or having stuff come up is actually a perfect time to be in class. It's a perfect time to be in this course because it's a microcosm of later on in life. Like when you go to launch that business, you go to do that hard thing that's going to take more than three months. It's going to take more than three years, perhaps. There's going to be a lot of inconvenient junk that comes up. And how are you going to face that? Are you going to say, oh, I can't do it because I'm sick and I got this and I got that? No, like figure out how to juggle it now so you can juggle it later. That's just my perspective on it. Um, I think you're capable of doing it. I think I'm capable of doing it. I've seen other people push themselves to be able to do it. So that's why I, I'm encouraging all of us to like not make that excuse and just figure out how to make the best of it anyway. Figure out how to fit it in, schedule it, even though there doesn't appear to be the time because this is the course I'm in. Behind impossible goals lies, there's no way your, your current self can achieve an impossible goal. And so you have to throw out the existing model for which you would achieve that thing. What got you here will not get you there. And so you've got to throw out the current model, come up with a totally new model, and that you'll start, as you start to develop that model, you'll see ways and pathways of getting to your goal. It's going to be fewer than, uh, you know, the thousand ways that you can get to some small mediocre goal. But how, that's why impossible goals are so incredible. It's because they force a new version of you. They force you to think differently. So Understand, I love Myron talks so much about contributing factors and determining factors. So there are things that come up in life. We always are going to have obstacles and things. Make sure you're not confusing determining factors with contributing factors. Like there are things that, like so many things are speed bumps that we think are determining factors, right? Like my mom having breast cancer three times and like all this stuff that I had to go through and the hurdles and the things that I had to go through in life. They, they didn't determine where I went. I determined, I was the determining factor in the choices that I made and the paths that I took. It was up to me to respond, um, to choose how I wanted to respond to something. Did I want to be upset? Did I want to be happy? Did I want to be empowered? Did I want to be, make excuses? And I've picked wrong a lot of times, which is why I'm trying to share this with you guys. But understand the difference between contributing factors, hurdles, and things that get in your way along your race and determining factors, things that might end your race, um, you know, decisions that you're making that are like, that are up to you that determine the ultimate direction of things. So with that, um, that's the end of this video. I, I will be traveling this week, um, this week coming up. So the last week in May or the middle week in May, I will be attending Offer Mastery Live. If you guys are interested, um, I would love to meet you there if you're gonna be there and you're watching, if you're interested. Um, I also might do a review on that because it's kind of a, it's the last one that he's going to do in person, uh, Myron Golden's Offer Mastery Live. And um, yeah, I don't know. I, if that's something you guys are interested, leave a comment in and I'll do a review on that event as well. I hope to get value out of it. And so that way I can pour into you guys and I'll see you in the next one.